the discussion of the basic characteristics of volcanic ash and the hazards it poses to aircraft. In addition, we will discuss methods of volcanic ash detection, avoidance, and mitigation if encountered, as well as reporting requirements. Volcanoes are formed by the accumulation of lava and ash expelled from craters and vents in the Earth during both explosive and non-explosive eruptions. Although there are hundreds of active volcanoes around the world, they are typically located together in well-known regions of high geologic activity. The highest concentration of active volcanoes lies around the rim of the Pacific Ocean, in an area described as the Ring of Fire. For the purposes of aviation, only volcanoes with an explosive type of eruption are of concern and pose a direct threat to aircraft. During an explosive volcanic eruption, massive quantities of dissolved gases are released over a very short period of time, causing the surrounding rock to be pulverized by shock waves and blasted vertically upwards. A vast column of ash-laden gases results, and in major eruptions, this column can reach as high as the stratosphere within minutes. As the ash cloud above the volcano grows and extends in the direction of the wind, it poses an ever greater threat to aircraft in the region. Volcanic ash in the atmosphere is one of the most hazardous substances that an aircraft can encounter. When flying through volcanic ash, molten deposits accumulate rapidly upon ingestion into the engine. This causes rapid erosion and damage to the internal engine components. Following flight into volcanic ash, there is an immediate increase in EGT and fuel flow, followed by engine surge, thrust loss, and possible engine flameout. In addition to engine damage and flameout, volcanic ash has a significant effect on the engine's ability to air start. In severe cases, it may not be possible to restart the engines. Volcanic dust may also block the pedo system and result in unreliable airspeed indications. Due to its abrasive qualities, volcanic dust can cause serious damage to wing and tail leading edge surfaces. Volcanic dust can also damage windshields, resulting in obscured vision. The International Airways Volcano Watch, or IAVW, established international arrangements for monitoring volcanic ash and providing warnings to aircraft. The IAVW consists of two parts, observation and advisory and warning messages. Volcano observatories around the world monitor and interpret sensor data in order to predict if and when an explosive eruption is imminent. Weather and other satellites can also provide data about the existence of volcanic ash in the atmosphere. In many cases, special air reports from pilots may be the first notification authorities have of the presence of volcanic ash clouds. When an eruption or volcanic ash cloud is detected, that information is passed on to the appropriate Area Control Center, or ACC. Air Traffic Services immediately relays all available information to pilots and coordinates with flight dispatchers to reroute aircraft. A NOTAM or ASHTAM is issued, identifying the affected air routes and providing guidance for alternative routes. 
Once the volcanic ash cloud has been detected, the local Meteorological Watch Office, or MWO, will also issue a SIGMET for volcanic ash in the area. In addition to these advisory services, ICAO has established volcanic ash advisory centers around the globe with designated areas of responsibility. In the event of a volcanic eruption, these centers provide 24-hour support, guidance, and advice to aviation authorities, including the following. Expert forecasting for the extent and movement of the ash cloud and continuous monitoring via meteorological satellites. Depending on the density of the cloud and the time of exposure, the flight crew will generally observe the following indicators that their aircraft has entered a volcanic ash cloud. Smoke or dust in the cockpit, an acrid odor similar to electrical smoke or the smell of sulfur, multiple engine malfunctions such as compressor stalls, increasing EGT, torching from tailpipe, and flameouts, St. Elmo's fire or other static discharges accompanied by a bright orange glow in the engine inlets, and a fire warning in the forward cargo area. Flight into areas of known volcanic activity must be avoided. This is particularly important during hours of darkness or daytime instrument meteorological conditions when volcanic dust may not be visible. When flight planning, check all NOTAMs, ATC directives, pilot reports, SIGMETs, and any other available sources for current status of volcanic activity. Plan the flight to remain well clear of reported volcanic activity. If possible, stay upwind of volcanic ash or dust. When flying near an erupting volcano, act immediately to get as far from the ash and dust cloud as possible. Do not rely on airborne weather radar to detect and display volcanic ash and dust. Airborne weather radar systems used on commercial aircraft are not designed to detect the very small ash and dust particles. If it is determined that the aircraft has encountered volcanic ash, the flight crew should immediately reduce thrust, turn auto throttles off if engaged, and exit the cloud as quickly as possible. Ash clouds may extend for hundreds of miles, and pilots should not attempt to fly through the cloud. The shortest route out of the ash may require an immediate, descending 180-degree turn, terrain permitting. In the event of a volcanic ash encounter, the following procedures are recommended. Turn on all accessory bleed air, including all air conditioning packs, nacelles, and wing anti-ice. This provides additional engine stall margin by reducing pressure within the engine. If possible, turn on continuous ignition, disconnect the autopilot, and place the thrust levers to idle. This will reduce EGT and debris buildup on the turbine blades and hot section components. If EGT indications are extremely high, consider shutting down one engine. However, attempt to keep at least one engine operating within limits to provide electrical power and bleed air for cabin pressurization. If any engines are shut down, start the APU and attempt an engine restart when clear of volcanic dust. Monitor airspeed and pitch attitude as airspeed indication may become unreliable or be lost entirely if ash blocks the pitot-static system. Finally, conduct a precautionary landing at the nearest suitable airport.
When landing at airports where volcanic ash has been deposited on the runway, be aware that even a thin layer of dry ash can be detrimental to braking action. Wet ash on the runway may also reduce effectiveness of braking. It is also recommended that reverse thrust be limited to lessen the possibility of reduced visibility and engine ingestion of airborne ash. Despite the advantages of radar and satellite data, pilot reports may provide the most efficient means for relaying the location and altitude of volcanic eruptions. Pilot reports give the earliest possible indications of the plume height, direction of drift, and magnitude of the eruption. Following a volcanic encounter, pilots should immediately submit a pilot report using the Volcanic Activity Reporting Form. Pilots should verbally transmit the data required in items 1 through 8 of the VAR form as soon as possible. The data required in items 9 through 16 of the VAR should be relayed after landing, if possible. If a VAR form is not immediately available, relay enough information to identify the position and type of volcanic activity.